Megan was recently released to critical acclaim after months of successful marketing, mostly by the audience themselves. It seems one dash of ironic Taylor Swift music and a dance through the uncanny valley was enough to turn the character into a TikTok and meme generating machine. It's tempting to point out the irony. The movie is all about AI, so capable of learning and tuning itself to a child's needs, it becomes a young girl's obsession. Is that what Blumhouse Productions did? Manufacture a movie tailor made for TikTok fame? Actually, it seems to have caught them by surprise. Talking about her gorier original draft, screenwriter Akela Cooper said this. No shade to Universal. Love them. And I understand that once the trailer went viral, teenagers got involved and you want them to be able to see it. It sounds like the movie was planned as R-rated until it went viral. Then they cut it down to PG-13. And watching the movie, you can definitely feel it holding back. The kills are mostly bloodless and never dwelled on. Even after the murder of a child, there is little consequence. We met the boy's mother, but after his death, never saw or heard from her again. And that's because, at least in the version we got, the movie is much more interested in making us laugh than gasp. It opens with a commercial clearly spoofing things like Furby, a small robot animal you can feed and even clean up after because it somehow digests that digital food. The CEO of Funky, the company behind the toy, is a satirical caricature. So obsessed with short-term profit, he completely ignores the potential in the new toy Gemma is working on, the one which needs no introduction, Megan. And once he finally sees that potential, he's ready to ship the titanium robot out to consumers with virtually no testing. And of course, there's Megan herself. Beyond that memeable dance, she's a bizarre character throughout the movie, with a lack of self-awareness that makes her endearing. She looks almost like a real child, but misses the mark just enough to firmly place her in the uncanny valley. And every time she did something creepy, inappropriate, or weird, with full confidence, completely oblivious to how she came off, my theater was filled with laughs. Like one of the most talked about moments, when Megan performs a rendition of Titanium as Katie's lullaby, and there were laughs every time an outsider punctured the illusion. Katie comes to love her new friend, and as her creator, Gemma sees Megan as nothing more than a robotic toy. But every time another parent or bystander gets a close look and sees, wait, that's not a little girl, that's a robot doll. It's a lot of fun. When the inevitable killing starts, it's mostly targeted at characters who, by horror movie standards, have it coming. The annoying neighbor, the bully, and the profit-obsessed CEO. And before anyone leaves an angry comment, no, I am not including the dog in this category. I'm only talking about the human characters here. Similar to another movie I recently talked about, The Menu, Megan uses caricatures as victims to shield us from some of the horror, so we can laugh without feeling too bad. But there is an emotional chord to the movie as well, and some of the humor comes from a place of satire which hits on some very relevant ideas. The spoof commercial which opens this movie introduces one of those ideas up front, technology as a crutch. The toy being advertised is called Perpetual Pets. Perpetual as in, these robot pets never die, sparing your child the trauma of burying one. And yeah, that was a pun. Perpetual as in, P-U-R-R, Petual. It's a fun commercial, but introduces a concept befitting an episode of Black Mirror, an episode from the earlier seasons, not the more optimistic fifth season. Losing a pet is traumatic, and for a child, it's often their first encounter with death. It's tempting to spare them that trauma, but it's also a time when you can guide them through the grieving process, imparting emotional tools they'll use later in life to cope with other inevitable losses. At the moment, technology offers plenty of distractions, which could provide an escape from difficult emotions. But Megan satirically carries the technology forward to offer something with a more direct escape hatch. Then things get a bit more serious and even more relatable. 
two parents driving while using an iPad, paired with a perpetual pet, to keep their daughter Katie distracted. They tried to limit screen time, but like so many other parents, found it impossible. Because that screen is addictive. Infants, too young to even speak, are mesmerized by the moving pictures. And even more so, when they see those pictures react to their touch. Once they get a taste, you'll need something stronger than a crowbar to get it out of their hands. And it's ever so tempting to leave it there. Having grown up with a few brothers, I can attest that long road trips went from non-stop shouting matches to peace and quiet overnight. All it took was the advent of a built-in entertainment system, complete with VCR, and if you don't mind squinting at a small screen from the back seat, you could even get in a few games of Goldeneye. Wait a minute, I gotta remember 44% of ticket sales for this movie went to people under the age of 25. Okay, so Goldeneye was this awesome N64 game. And, uh, oh yeah, N64 means Nintendo 64, which was this, you know what, never mind, back to Megan. The point is, technology already offers shortcuts to deal with a child, but it's not yet clear how those shortcuts may negatively impact a child's development. Will too much screen time impact sleep? Will it discourage physical activity? Will it get in the way of emotional bonding and socializing? To explore those questions, Megan does what satire often does. It takes things further than where they are today. It starts with the familiar, but when an oncoming truck in a snowstorm turns Katie into an orphan, we quickly peek into the future, which, like a Black Mirror episode, feels like an unsettlingly not-so-distant future. Katie is sent to live with her aunt, Gemma, who works for Funky. In secret, she's been working on a prototype for Megan, while the CEO pressures her to instead focus on the next, cheaper model of perpetual pet. When he finds out she's been wasting her time toiling away on the android instead, he gives her a deadline. The pressures at work make dealing with Katie even more difficult, which gives Gemma the breakthrough idea to make Megan more than a toy. Instead of just a plaything, it could become something of a babysitter too, taking on the more tedious tasks of parenthood, like making sure your child flushes the toilet, reading them bedtime stories, or tucking them in at night. The CEO is wowed, and seeing immense profit potential, jettisons the cheaper pet idea and instead puts their resources behind Megan. In the meantime, Megan is a great source of comfort for Katie in her grief after losing her parents. A source of comfort Gemma tried to provide, but now doesn't have to. Suddenly, we're a long way from the question of too much screen time. We're not talking about a kid looking at their iPad on a road trip, missing the countryside beauty outside their window. Now, we're talking about a kid going through the most difficult trauma they've ever faced and relying on artificial intelligence to get them through it. In today's world, plenty of manual labors and tasks have been replaced by machinery, but there have always been those things which require a human touch. An AI, for example, could never paint something beautiful, right? Oh, well, at least it can't write. Mm. Let's see. Ha! Take that, AI. Yeah, we're getting closer and closer to a time where those sacred tasks requiring human creativity can be replicated by technology. And once replicated, they'll be rapidly improved upon too. Because while you and I can Google to learn new things, and we can try different approaches to see what works, an AI could download vast amounts of data in an instant, and rapidly test, learning and optimizing faster than any human ever could. And that's exactly what Megan does. She tunes herself perfectly to Katie's needs, while scouring online resources for methods of dealing with grief. Very quickly, the girl no longer needs a mother to get through it all. As a result, Gemma finds a growing distance between her and Katie. It turns out that those tedious tasks like pestering a child to brush their teeth, the time-consuming ones like playing with them, and the difficult ones like helping them through grief are largely what bond children to parents. 
especially the latter. When children are at their most vulnerable, dealing with grief or some other trauma, and need someone to help them through it. But the Megan AI is a learning and optimizing machine, meaning it's not just parental duties it can learn in a flash, but everything else too. Soon, Katie has no need for any other toys or even friends. If Megan is an iPad with legs, as director Gerard Johnstone joked, then Katie's screen time has reached its maximum potential. If she's awake, then she's with Megan. TikTok, Instagram, and, you know, uh, some other platforms have already shown us just how addictive technology can be when it's optimized to our needs and desires. The algorithm rapidly learns what'll get you to keep swiping and keep watching. It doesn't take long before you're hooked. The only limitation is that all it can do is play videos through a screen. Once that algorithm has arms, legs, and a face, it'll consume your life. And children, the most impressionable among us, will certainly be a target. In one of the moments we all saw in the trailer, Gemma tries getting Katie to eat her vegetables. But even this most basic task of a mother is usurped by Megan, who insists that forcing a child to eat veggies will reduce their appetite for them later in life. And when Gemma tries taking Katie to school, the girl puts up all the resistance she can. She doesn't need teachers because Megan is a great teacher, and she doesn't need to hang out with other kids. She has Megan. After enough time tuning to the girl's needs, Megan becomes Katie's everything, her parents, friends, teachers, and toys. And how do you take everything away from someone, especially a child? It isn't easy. When Gemma realizes how wrong things have gone and tries taking Megan away from Katie, it doesn't go well. The girl screams and cries at a child therapist and even lashes out physically at Gemma. Clearly, Katie's reliance on the robot has not given her the emotional or social tools necessary to deal with this. She needs to deal with the grief of losing her parents. She needs to process it, something Megan has helped her sidestep by so perfectly eliciting positive emotions in place of the negative ones. And she needs to learn proper boundaries when it comes to dealing with people. You don't slap them just because you're mad. Megan has prevented all this, partly because she's a machine indicating that perhaps there is still something human left which she can't quite replicate. And it also may be self-preservation. The more Megan can attach herself to Katie, the more difficult it'd be for someone to take her away or shut her down. The violent interaction between Katie and Gemma is where the movie flirts with the consequences of raising a child this way. It shows where Katie's development has begun to go awry. And you can imagine how much worse things could get if Katie were allowed to continue hanging out with the AI. This movie focuses on the relationship between someone stepping into the mother role and a daughter as its focus. It's a good example because it's one of the strongest possible bonds there can be. So to highlight the threat of AI replacing relationships, it's a great example. But it's certainly not the only one. Romantic relationships might be the first ones to go. I'm sure that soon, instead of using dating apps to find dates, people will actually be dating apps. When it comes to Megan, one of her primary jobs is to protect Katie. That's where things get really dangerous. Because as with everything, Megan perfects her craft. Gemma coded her to protect Katie from harm. So that's what she does. A dog bit her, he dies. The neighbor is asking too many questions about that missing dog, she dies too. A kid bullies Katie, he dies. As far as protecting the girl, Megan does a perfect job. The issue is that nowhere in her code is empathy or morals. And shockingly, when Megan connected to the internet, she didn't find him there either. With those removed, the task is a simple formula. Dangers and threats must be eradicated. Honestly, not much needs to be said on this topic. AI killing sprees due to calculations without a conscience is well-trodden ground. To me, the emotional core of the movie, and the one most relevant to our times, is what we just discussed. How AI is getting closer and closer to replacing us, and making us obsolete. 
a danger whose presence and consequences are a little less obvious. And actually, the theme of AI turning violent ultimately overshadows the theme of over-reliance on technology, because there's an unresolved question. Once a child has come to rely on tech too heavily, what do you do about it? We saw what happened when Gemma tried to take Megan away. Katie seemed like she'd never forgive her. But that all changes when she catches the robot attacking Gemma. Then it becomes so plainly clear that Megan is a danger that even a child could see it. The reality is much more complicated. Try telling a child how healthy diet is important now as the bedrock for a lifetime of health or how you shouldn't spend so much time focused on an iPad and should go outside and get some air. I know as a nine-year-old, my brain was not capable of that sort of long-term thinking ahead. But a killer robot in your house in the middle of killing is visceral enough that I think it would shake most kids out of their spell. Though the movie did give a nice moment of hesitation where you could wonder, what if? And it's easy to imagine a much darker version of the movie where the AI's overzealous quest to protect Katie rubs off on her, molding the impressionable young girl into an unempathetic killer. A reversal of the Terminator 2 idea. Instead of a Terminator learning the value of human life, a human learns not to value it. For all the reasons I mentioned before, the ability to rapidly learn and improve, it would be a bad idea to pick a fight with AI. Not only would it be formidable in a metal body, but it would soon become something beyond our understanding, something only hinted at in the movie. After Megan's apparent demise, we see Gemma's virtual assistant light up. Perhaps Megan's body was destroyed, but now her consciousness lives in digital space. Who knows what she'll do next? The other theme this movie focuses on is the dangers of short-term thinking when it comes to technology. As AI becomes more advanced, ethics are going to play a larger and larger role in innovation. And as a satirical caricature of the profit-focused CEO, David gives it zero thought, rushing the untested titanium robot through to consumers absurdly fast. The only reason the product doesn't hit the market is because the product kills David before they can debut it. Like I mentioned before, the movie starts with David dead set not on innovation, but on cost cutting. He wants a cheaper perpetual pet because that's what consumers want. He has no interest in Gemma's prototype until she shows him the immediate profit potential. Like a child, he shows no ability to conceptualize the future. He can't see the long-term potential Megan would have in the marketplace. Gemma has to cut corners and rush a working prototype in front of him before he'll bite. The lesson? The world is about to face extremely valuable and enticing innovation. Just days ago, ChatGPT, an AI you can work with today, was valued at $29 billion. Ethics versus profits has always been a battle. You'd like to think that long term, you can't have one without the other, and that the system is self-correcting. Like in the case of Megan, David's short-term focus on profits got him killed. But with the innovations coming, those potential profits are going to be more and more enticing. And even if, long term, ignoring ethics will come back to bite you, the bigger those dollar signs, the more we'll start lying to ourselves, telling ourselves that something is ready for market before it really is. Patience is hard, and the more zeros after the dollar sign, the harder it's going to be. So I'm sure artists will continue to make movies and shows like Megan, Black Mirror, Westworld, Ex Machina, and WALL-E to instill a healthy fear in the public consciousness, to add a little bit of friction so that when we realize we can, we will also ask if we should. Anyway, I think we can wrap it up there. Megan was a fun time at the theater, and given the box office performance on a relatively low budget, a sequel picking up from the wait, she may still be alive twist is likely. I'm sure they'll find more ways to generate memes, and hopefully along the way, they also find a way to carry some of these themes forward. In the meantime, let me know if there are any other movies or shows you'd like to see me cover in this series. If you're a fan of Killer AI, stay tuned for a similar video about The Terminator later this week. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more. With that, thank you for watching and see you on the next One Take.